Hey all, today we are going to do if else in Java. In the last lecture we have done how to use independent if statement that is used when we have a number of conditions independent of each other where it checks every separate condition individually but now we have a situation where we have only two options either the condition would be true or the condition would be false. We don't have many options out here. So we have to choose one of the two blocks of statements to be executed. If the condition is true, we have to execute this first block of statements. In case the given condition is false, we have to execute the statements given with the else keyword. So whenever we have two options, we use the keywords if and else. Now be careful that you don't have a semicolon after if. Curly brackets are required if I have more than one statement. If there is a single statement, no curly bracket is required. Similarly is the case with else. So if you have more than one statement, I'll put it in brackets. Otherwise, it's not a necessity. So this is the basic syntax how if else is used. Now, if I have to consider an example, where would I apply this? So a very simple example could be, I have to take marks of a student. And then I have to show the result, whether the student is pass or fail. Let's say the passing marks are 40. So I click on show and here we get the coding window. What I need to do over here, I have to read the marks. I have to check if the marks are greater than or equal to 40, the student is pass. Otherwise, the student is fail. So I've taken a variable m for the marks and we read the value from the first text field. So I need to write integer dot percent and over here we'll read the value of the first text box that is text field t1 and then I give my if I check if m is greater than or equal to 40 if it is so I have a single line so I'm not putting curly brackets so t2 dot set text should be pass else if it is not then t2 dot set text should be fail so this is how we write the code to check if a student is pass or fail so if the marks are greater than or equal to 40 the student is pass if not the student is fail now let's execute the code so we go to run menu and click on run file option so this will execute my code. I'll be entering the marks and the program will tell me the result as an output. So we're just about to get the screen. Yeah, so here's the screen. I enter 78 and it shows pass. Then I enter 45. It's still greater than 40. So still the result is pass. But if I enter 12, the condition is false. So it shows fail. So you saw that here we have only two options possible. Either the condition will be true or it will be false. If true, we get the first result. If false, we get the second result. It was quite simple. So this is how we use if else. Let's take another example. Now what I have to do, I don't have to check for pass or fail. I have to enter a number and I have to check whether that number is even or odd. Now what are even numbers? Even numbers are those which are divisible by 2, like 2, 4, 6, 8, those are even numbers, and which are not divisible by 2, like 1, 3, 5, 7 are odd numbers. So I have to enter a number, and I have to check whether it is even or odd. So we get the number. Now how do we check whether the number is divisible by 2? We have this percentage operator, which is called mod, or modulus, or simply the remainder operator. The purpose of this operator is to divide the number, and give the remainder, the leftover remainder. So I divide m by 2 and check if the remainder is 0. If the remainder is 0 means the number is divisible by 2. So if it is divisible by 2, I will show even. And if it is not divisible by 2, I will show odd. So when we run this code, I will enter a number. That number will be stored in m and then m is checked whether after dividing by 2, we get a remainder as 0 or not. If it is 0, it is even. But if it is 75, so the remainder will be 1. So it shows the number is odd. So that's how we can check anything. Anything which has exactly two options, one for true, one for false. That can be checked with the help of if-else. 
So that's how if else works in Java, C or C++. So the concept of if else remains the same, whatever programming language it may be. So that's how we use it in Java. So you can create, try creating some programs like you can input uh, selling price and cost price of a product and print whether there is a profit or loss. Then you can input, uh, say, sides of a cardboard and print whether it's a rectangular shape or it's a square. Then you can input three sides of a triangle. Check if all three sides are equal, print it's equilateral. Otherwise, you can print it's not an equilateral triangle. So certain examples can be done with the help of if-else. Hope you understand the basic concept of if-else. If yes, do like the video and share with your friends and subscribe the channel so that you can keep getting the updates of the new videos. Thank you.